from zero all the way to 20 cents, which was way outside of the price that sugar had been in the last 10 years. So again, we had a position that was profitable over a wide range of prices. Now, what, what, is that, what does it all mean? It means that we were getting a great, great advantage over others who had to guess every day where the price of sugar or where the price of gold was going. We didn't have to guess. All we had to do was make sure that, that the price was between zero, and we don't care how low it goes, it'll let it go to zero, and 20 cents on the upside. And since sugar was way below that level, we had nothing at all to worry about. We had nothing to concern ourselves with. Our only concern was how much money were we going to make? Well, obviously, this type of position really excited me. And just to show you the other side of trading options, and this is something that as it has happened to others, it also happened to me. The worst thing that you can do in options, and many of us have done, uh, probably all of us have, have done this that have traded options, is to buy an option, have the market move in our favor, and have the option not gain any value. Let me give you an example of that, and that, that let me give you a dramatic example, but this is a really a real life uh, chart that shows how that works. This is a chart of the bond market. The chart on the upper left is the bond market moving from the 100 level to the 93 level uh, over a period of two months. That's a pretty fast move. If you would have sold a bond future, you would have made $7,000. That pretty good gain, you would have made $7,000 during that time period, approximately. Okay. Now, let's say that you Listen to Dave Kaplan, and he said, well, if you know where the market's going, buy a put. Let's say you had done that, and that was my advice back then. And let's say you bought an out-of-the-money put, a 90 bond put. How much money would you have made? You know what would have happened to you? You would have gone from about $500 to zero. You would have actually lost $500 a position. On the, on the chart on the upper right, shows the price during that time period went from $500 actually to worthless, even though the future contract gained $7,000. Okay. On the other hand, let's say, as I'm recommending, you would have sold that put option. What would have happened to you? Well, the market dove against you just about as dramatically as it possibly could, but the put still declined in value. And that is why we want to trade like a bookie. We don't want to have to guess. The yes, it's easy to see now all oh, that market broke, and, and you're going to get a lot of people to say, yeah, I could have analyzed this, and, it, and I knew it was going to go down. But that's after the fact. When the market, before the market reached that level, I don't know if there's anything that could have really told you which way the market's going. It would have been a guess. Instead of guessing, why not use a strategy that can win no matter which way the market goes? And that's what we are doing. OK. There is one important item of options that I do want to teach you before we get into the actual trade like a bookie strategy, and that's volatility. That's volatility. Now, volatility is not complicated. There's no need for fancy computers or formulas, but volatility controls the premium you receive when you sell an option. So it is the one principle and the most important principle that I want you to know. Okay, what is volatility? Volatility is just the average expected movement of a market. Okay, taking a look at this chart, we can see in the beginning the market's very quiet. The market's in a trading range. Volatility is low because there's little expectation of the market moving. Okay? That means the premium for the option will probably also be low. Because what option sellers are saying is that, well, the market probably isn't going anywhere, and I'll sell a bunch of these options cheap. And option buyers are saying, why should I pay much for these options? The market's so quiet, it's not going anywhere. So low volatility just means that there's little expectation of markets moving, and the market's probably pretty quiet like that. Okay. What happens, however, when the market breaks out and begins trending? Volatility then moves up volatility moves higher. Okay? So when we get a severely trending market, we usually have higher volatility and higher premium for the options. 
So options can change in premium. There is not a standard set premium for options. Volatility always changes. Now, what do we do to find out whether that premium is high or low? In other words, under or overvalued? Well, what we do is simply we, we just track it all the time. We always compare it to past readings. That's how we know whether volatility is high or low. And this is a chart out of our newsletter, and you're going to be receiving the same thing. And this is going to show you whether volatility is high or low. Now, the, on the left are the names of different futures markets that we track. The next column is the range, the two-year range. The next column after that is the six-year range. Then we have the monthly volatility for the last three months, the volatility trend, and the most important column on the right is whether volatility is high or low. Okay. So what we do, we do all this work for you. We track all of the markets, and we let you know what markets are the best <coughs> ones to trade as far as getting higher premium values. So we do, we do all of that work for you. Now, actually, the market that we still find to be the best, whether it has high or low volatility, is the Treasury bond market. Again, because that market rarely makes a large, unexpected move. And that's the best thing for us. That's the best thing for us. If we don't have a huge swinging market, then we really feel very good about selling premium.